Hi, welcome to Bike Social. I'm here in Donington Park and uh, I'm going to have a go at Moto Gymkhana. Now, I've watched videos of this and I've got to say I'm a bit nervous. Uh, I'm on the BMW G310 GS and I've pretty well kitted it out with some RNG crash protection, just in case things go a little bit wrong. So, I'm going to go and get signed in and go and find my instructor. My instructor today is seasoned pro Justin Leary. I caught up with him to find out a little bit more about Moto Gymkhana. So Justin, what is Moto Gymkhana? Well, Moto Gymkhana is a non-lethal motorsport. It's designed for navigating a course against the clock as fast as possible with a minimum number of mistakes. Okay, so who comes on these courses? We have all sorts of riders come. There is no specific bike. You can have a 50cc, you can have a big 1400. As long as you can ride it and have fun with an open mind, Sounds good, but am I going to fall off? No, it's very rare for someone to take a tumble. The main thing is to have fun and relax. OK, let's give it a go. OK. Before we started, we were given a briefing and a quick run through of the day. Welcome to Donington. I see you've got the weather for it. What we're going to do today, in front of you here, we have the warm up course. You would then do a figure of eight to keep your tires warm. You would then do a competition course. The challenge of the day is for you to ride a competition course as fast as you can do it in your own time. Next up was a run through of what the all important cones mean. Red, you're going to pass that on your right hand side. Blue, left hand side. A yellow pylon. They usually come in twos and they'll be indicating a gate. You're generally going to pass between them. A little yellow uh, indicator, it could be on a red, could be on a blue. It means you're going to rotate round this more than 270 degrees. Not much to remember then. With the theory out of the way, it's time to get out there and give it a go. Okay. I needn't have felt worried. On that first run, as soon as I got out, the bike just felt completely natural. I was able to drop it into corners and tip around. I was no pro, but I was really enjoying it. And Justin was on hand straight away afterwards to give me some pointers and help me advance through the session. The key thing for you is give yourself more space on the way in. Remember to screw all the way back before you turn in. More space and screw back before turning in. Easy. We're about to go out again and uh, this time we've got a lead. So I've got to try and remember red, right, blue, left. That'll be it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, second run out and just getting better and better. And I've got to say, I'm really, really impressed with this BMW G310 GS. You can do Moto Gymkhana on any motorcycle, but this bike is wide bars, lightweight. It's just absolutely fantastic, loving it. One of the things I really want to get out of this for the road is how I can turn tighter on bigger bikes on small roads. Yeah. And I've always like feathered the clutch and back brake and everything. It, on the road, would it be, no, just off the clutch? and use the back brake. I mean, I have a K1200S yeah. that I use on the road and I use the same techniques. And when I turn, I don't use the clutch. Go exactly where I want it and I haven't touched the clutch once yet. You know, I'm getting quite slow now. It did feel weird at first, but on this run, I didn't touch the clutch at all. And as Justin said, it just made things so much easier. I feel like I'm getting somewhere now. Next, we moved on to the figure of eight track. Now, Justin gave us a demo, but that didn't do much to put me at ease because there was no way I was going to be turning that tight. I knew it. So now it was my turn. Okay. Okay, so in your own time when you're ready. Go. I was turning, but certainly at first, I, I just didn't have the confidence to lean right over. It felt weird at such low speed, but Justin was giving me pointers that helped me get faster and faster. Ready? We all know that it's key on a motorbike to look where you're going, not where you don't want to go. Uh, but on a figure of eight loop, that means as you're coming into the first cone, you need to have your head right back over your shoulder looking at the second cone so you can set yourself up for the turn. So I've just done the GP8 course, which is the second session of today. And this is just a figure of eight. You have to do it five times. You're timed and it's just seeing if you can get yourself any quicker. The, the biggest thing for me wasn't how fast I was going, it was how far I was going. And that's a key thing in this Moto Gymkhana, is the guy who goes the shortest distance is generally going to be the quickest. 
and it, it is you have to get over that fear of letting the bike drop in but again i'm not touching the clutch it's just all on the throttle and the back brake and it's given me far more confidence to uh turn the bike around and kind of shuffle it around quick and it is addictive i want to get that timed out i got it down to 50.18 and i wanted to get it into 40s the other guy on the uh, f800 st he was in 43 so i've got a lot of work to do Next up was the final challenge of the day, which is a competition course. And we just saw this sea of different coloured cones. Yeah, it was kind of daunting, but with what we'd done, I was ready for it. And Justin took us on a walk around the course and it just all made sense, all those cones and different colours. He then gave us a demonstration before taking us on a lead on a practice run, which is something you wouldn't get in a proper competition. This is a hell of a lot tighter than everyone before. So it's competition time now. I've, um, I've walked this course, I've been led around it, now I've got to do two time sessions. And the competition is to myself, it's how much quicker I can do it the second time. But I've got to be able to ride the course, not knock into anything, not put my foot down, and I've got to remember the course. And there's a lot to remember, so see what, see what happens. It's the first time run out and I did it. I didn't miss any cones, I went the right number of times around, I didn't go the wrong way, and that was helped by the tour we were given around it, which you wouldn't get in a competition, but yeah, really good fun, and I, now I just need to do it faster. And into the stop. So I've just done my first run, and that was properly awesome. I remembered it all, I successfully did the course, one minute 38 something, so I've got to get it lower for the next run. I've got to not get cocky, that's my main thing, but I've got to, be more accurate and uh, yeah it's honestly really really good fun and all the fear I had of dropping the bike or fear of anything going wrong is unfounded you know it, at most really you might stumble and have to put your foot down but then you lose a second I'm not doing that Now, it's no surprise that the Japanese absolutely love Moto Gymkhana, where it originated, because it needs so much mental agility. You, riding needs to be almost automatic because you need to leave that brain capacity to be able to remember where all the course goes and, and what the cones mean. And yeah, it takes a lot of concentration. Yes! Yes, six seconds faster. So that's a massive achievement for you. I'm really happy. I, I, I'm happy riding this bike. I feel I've you know, got reasonable control of it, but I, I can just ride this so much better, slowly. I've, and that means I've got more control over this bike and that means I've got more control in general on the road. It doesn't matter what speed you're doing. The fact that I'm getting more at one with the bike, it sounds like a cliche, but I think the more you can do this, the whole idea of Moto Gymkhana is that the riding becomes second nature and you use the mental capacity to remember the course, which can be very complex. This apparently is a simple course. So if you can get your ability on the bike to be that high, riding on the road at any speed, you're, you're using the bike and understanding the bike and not having to think about it. That's giving you more mental capacity for hazard perception. Honestly, this is so much fun. I really, really recommend you come and give this a go. Forget all the worries about dropping your bike or any kind of damage. It's really unlikely to happen. This is brilliant. 38.92 to a 132.44. Cool. Excellent. At the end of the day, we had a chance to have one more time run and I was determined to go out and better that time. I kept off the clutch, I kept my shoulders relaxed, and I kept my head turned to keep focused on where I wanted to go. It was gonna be about accuracy, not about speed. And it worked. Yes! So honestly, this has been brilliant, Justin, thank you. And, and I didn't fall off, which is good. Uh, and I've realized having done it that I wasn't gonna fall off, was I? This is really, really good fun at walking pace. So what do I do next? Well, the next thing is if you're bitten by the bug, is get in contact with the local group. Yeah. So we have Facebook pages for, we've got West Midlands, East Midlands, down in the South. Get along, practice night, or if you're really feeling brave, go for a competition. Cool, and well, what's it gonna cost? Annual membership is 50 pounds, and the entries for the competition are currently 45 pounds per entry for the day. So this isn't an expensive motorsport, is it? And, and those competitions, are they just in the UK? So we have a series in the UK, but if you travel abroad, worldwide, there are much Gymkhana clubs in every country. So you're more than welcome to go along and join in. Brilliant. Well, I definitely want to do it again. I hope one day I'm going to try and compete against you. Excellent. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Thank you. 
So I came to Motor Gym Kana today because, not just because I wanted to go, have a go at a, a different form of motorsport, something completely different to anything I've done before, but because genuinely I wanted to get better at turning the bike around in the road. Now, I've been on launches with uh, people who have done Motor Gym Kana and I'll spin the bike around the road, I'm there paddling it backwards and forwards. And I really think there's so much you can take away from this and I've really learned to be able to spin a bike around. And it is dead simple, it really is. Give it a practice, try it in a car park, something like that, but trust the bike and just take your time build up to it, but get your hand off the clutch, get the bike rolling, and then it's all about throttle and just tempering it with the back brake. Once you get that feeling correct and you feel like you can move the bike around, then you've just got to relax your shoulders. And we find this at any speed, it's very easy to get very tense on a bike and lock yourself and you're, you're fighting either way, you're, you're fighting what the bike wants to do. Once you learn to just drop your shoulders, relax and almost let go of the bars, let the bars just drop round and turn, you can just turn so much quicker, so much easier with so much more confidence. Genuinely this has changed my riding, not just in the slow speed stuff, but on the road at any speed. If you're fighting the bars, you're not going to get the best out of the bike, so I really can't recommend enough that you give this a go. And hopefully, I'll see you at one of the next events.